Okay, Brian, here we have left side. Uh, the view is not much different either side. I like this side because you can see a couple things going on with your hands. Um, when that left hand enters, see how we can see the palm from the side? Um, there's no point to that. Again, like the front view, you want that hand, that palm down and then towards the back wall as soon as you can get it there. So pushing out um, isn't doing anything as far as helping you move forward. So once you're reaching all the way out, then you get that hand down. And you can see right there how much it bends underneath you. You're probably not using a whole lot of water, or using, pushing a whole lot of water right there because um, that it's just all of a sudden that forearm isn't really engaged anymore with the pull all the way up through those back muscles. You're just moving, and then here you're moving that elbow ahead of that wrist, okay? So that's not pulling any water through. And then again with that right arm now that's in, you can see those bubbles coming off. From what I can see on this view, it looks like a lot of the bubbles are because of the angle of your thumb, which um, some people swim with their thumb almost at a 90 degree angle to their hand, and it's not necessarily wrong. So I think because of the angle your whole hand enters and the fact that your thumb is out, um, it's creating a lot of those bubbles. But again, that's not a good thing to see that. So we can try and find ways to clean that up. That would be good. And again, here goes your hand underneath the body. And then, so basically through the first part of the pull, which again pulls out, it's a little wide, you're, you're getting a decent push. But as soon as you drop under at this angle and see how that elbow is leading, now we're not moving any water. So what we want to do is engage that early vertical forearm early and then hold on to that position. You'll feel it up through the muscles behind your shoulder when you do it right and it's kind of exhausting. So it's an easy thing to give up on when you start getting tired. But let's start focusing on that with you because you're so fast that I think if we can engage that pull a little longer, you um, can do some big things. So I'm gonna run you through in slow-mo. And if I'm being really picky, your kick is pretty steady, and then whenever you breathe, you cross your feet. Boom. <laughs> Again, for a triathlete, not a big deal at all because it's not, you know, it's it's just a little lighter of a kick, not quite as exhausting, but for a, if you're sprinting, you want to have that nice steady kick no matter what. Here it is in real time. You can see that those feet cross every time you breathe. Those eyes are looking a little more forward than I would like. Not by much, but just a little. If we can bring that head down just a little bit more, it's going to help you rise up on top of the water a little bit higher. Nice job.